My name is Felix Hörs. I'm from Heidelberg, Germany. And uh, the topic will be bronchial thermoplastia solution. And since the publication a couple of days before, a long time solution for our patients suffering on severe persistent asthma. We have very well-known speakers, so I'm only the coordinator here. Um, we have well-known speakers which worked with the technologies since the beginning, from the beginning, have a lot of experience with the technology. Ian is coming from the UK, Michael from Paris, and also we have a local here from Barcelona. Alphonse is also from he is here, and we are showing you what is possible when you use the bronchial thermoplasty in our severe asthma patients. Just one start slide, so the question is, do we really need that? But when you look to the prevalence of asthma, and when you look especially to the prevalence of severe asthma, you can be sure that there are enough patients out that which we have to improve our treatment possibilities to help the patient to really are able to live the life the GINA guidelines wants to offer them. Even they are suffering on asthma and the bronchial thermoplasty, it's now a technology which is available for our patients. You will have an overwhelming evidence for the technology which will be, which will be presented later. So I think with thermoplasty, we really have a solution for a subtype of our asthma patients. And uh, to show you the evidence and to show you also the long time efficacy of the data, I will ask Ian Pepperworth to come up and present the long term data of the AIR2 trial. Five years experience with the technology. Ian. Thank you very much, Felix, and uh, thank you to Boston Scientific for giving me this opportunity, and thank you all for coming and listening to me. Uh, I first heard about bronchial thermoplasty when I was having lunch in the canteen at St. Joseph's Hospital in 1995, 18 years ago, and I was having lunch with John Miller, one of the pioneers of this technique, and I remember thinking he was a bit crazy at the time, but it's amazing what's happened uh, in the 18 years since then, and it's been a great personal pleasure to be involved in the development of this technique and to be here today to present uh, the five-year follow-up data from the pivotal sham-controlled AIR-2 study. Now, I have some conflicts. I've participated in all but the first proof-of-concept trials of bronchial thermoplasty, and I have received payments for participation in those trials and for speaking about bronchial thermoplasty. Now, I want to start by reminding you of this uh, AIR-2 trial, which is very much a pioneering trial, one of the few double-blind, sham-controlled procedural trials that's been done. Uh, this was a study involving patients with moderate to severe asthma, and uh, last, lasted for 12 months, but the patients who were treated with bronchial thermoplasty uh, were followed up uh, for a further five years, and that's going to be the subject of my presentation today. Uh, just to recap, patients uh, were randomized two to one to active bronchial thermoplasty carried out uh, over three bronchoscopies over around six weeks, or sham-controlled bronchoscopy. All assessments were made blind by a blinded team uh, who followed the patient up qu quarterly uh, in the clinic until the end of year one. And of the 190 patients who had active treatment, 181 uh, were assessed at the end and 97 sham patients. There's been some loss to follow up over the subsequent five years, uh, but not greatly. The primary outcome of the AIR-2 trial itself was 
AQLQ, uh, ASPA specific quality of life questionnaire. Um, the primary outcome of the trial I'll be talking about is the percentage of patients with severe exacerbations at year two to five uh, versus at uh, year one. And I must emphasize we have no follow-up data on patients who were sham treated. Just to summarize the key findings of the AIR2 trials at one year, uh, active treatment resulted in improved asthma-related quality of life compared to sham control. 79% of actively treated patients achieved a clinically significant more than 0.5 increase in score compared to 64% of sham treated. There was uh, further evidence of clinical benefit with a 32% decrease in severe asthma exacerbations and a remarkable 84% reduction in ER visits uh, because of respiratory problems. That 66% uh, less days were lost from work, school, or other daily activities uh, because of asthma. There were no unanticipated device-related adverse events or deaths, and the safety profile overall over the one-year trial was acceptable. We did see transient worsening of asthma symptoms around the time of the bronchoscopy, as you would anticipate with this sort of procedure. Uh, as I've already mentioned, patient retention throughout this study has been very high. Uh, for me, the most remarkable findings of the AIR-2 trial were the reduction in severe exacerbations and particularly ER visits um, and the reduction in uh, days uh, lost because of asthma symptoms. And this uh, will be the focus of the two to five year follow-up the objective of which was to evaluate the durability of effectiveness and safety of bronchial thermoplasty to five years. And our primary, our primary outcome was a proportion of subjects experiencing a severe exacerbations in year two to five uh, is not substantially worse than what occurred in the first year when efficacy was established. Um, so the primary outcome was a proportion of subjects experiencing severe exacerbations during subsequent 12-month periods out to five years compared with the proportion who experienced severe exacerbations during the first year. And the non-inferiority margin was established as the upper 95% confidence limple, limit of the difference in proportion in each year minus year one uh, to be less than 20%. Uh, there were other endpoints uh, that were collected, including uh, lung function, and as you will see later, uh, CT scans. This is the patient accrual uh, during the five years of the study. So 85% of the original 190 patients survived right through to the end, or uh, continued in the study right through to the end. They all survived. And there were no differences in demographic or baseline clinical characteristics between those that completed the study and those that didn't. This is the primary endpoint, the percentage of subjects who had severe exacerbation by time. Uh, the first column is the year preceding bronchial thermoplasty, and you can see the reduction seen after treatment which was sustained over the next five years. And compared with year one, the non-inferiority margin, this 20%, uh, was met for all years, from years two to five. On the right here, you can see exacerbations enumerated as events per subject per year, uh, perhaps a more familiar measure to many of you, and the, the uh, outcome of treatment looked rather similar. And there was about a halving of uh, average severe exacerb exacerbation rates. ER visits remained at a very low level and the uh, remarkable effect that was seen at year one was maintained throughout the five year 
uh, follow-up period. Respiratory adverse event rates uh, were also reduced and that reduction was maintained. Uh, where they're expressed as the percentage of patients who reported adverse events or adverse events per patient per year. Uh, the reporting of multiple asthma symptoms um, were stable throughout the follow-up period, again, irrespective of the way that this metric was expressed. Hospitalizations for respiratory symptoms were generally low, uh, considering these patients had moderate to severe asthma, and there was no evidence of a change in the rate of hospitalizations um, post-procedure over the five years of follow-up. Uh, patients were asked about changes in maintenance asthma medication over the five years of follow-up. 28% of subjects had a 50% or more reduction in their daily inhaled steroid dose, and only 5% had a 50% increase in daily dose. There was an average reduction of 18% from baseline to five years. Seven subjects at study entry were on oral corticosteroids, and six were on oral corticosteroids at the study end. So no evidence that treatment burden was increasing. Lung function, here expressed in blue as the pre-bronchodilator and in red as the post-bronchodilator FEV1, was maintained post-treatment and uh, during the five-year follow-up. And the bronchodilator response was not greatly different before treatment and after treatment. CT scans were reviewed, and we had 93 CT pairs available in actively treated patients. There is no evidence that these patients were uh, developing airway damage with time. 0.2% per annum. Uh, developed features of bronchiectasis, roughly what you'd expect in a group of patients with moderate to severe asthma followed up in this way, although data is limited. There was no evidence of more significant structural problems, such as obliterative bronchiolitis or emphysema. The most common findings on CT scans are findings you would anticipate seeing in patients with moderate to severe asthma, including gas trapping, bronchial wall thickening, and some areas of consolidation. So I'd like to conclude uh, by saying that bronchial thermoplasty delivered by the Allaire system is a clinically proven safe and effective therapy uh, with evidence that the effects are durable over at least five years in patients with severe persistent asthma. The reductions in severe exacerbations compared to the sham-treated group were maintained over the five years of follow-up. Uh, the marked reduction in ER visits similarly maintained over follow-up. No evidence that hospitalizations, asthma symptoms, or other respiratory adverse events uh, were occurring over the follow-up period and uh, reassuring findings on spirometry and on CT scans in the subgroup that had this examination. So I would like to conclude by saying that uh, a single bronchial thermoplasty treatment comprising of three procedures uh, provides a long-term benefit with no evidence of a developing safety issue. Bronchial thermoplasty, I believe, has become an important addition to our treatment uh, for patients who have severe persistent asthma, uh, many of whom have very heterogeneous patterns of disease. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for listening.